dear viewers welcome to this episode of healthy india and we continue our discussion about cancer we learned that cancer is increasing globally in india too it's probably increasing at 1 to 2% cases per year we also learned that much of cancer can be prevented uh, there are different figures but maybe up to half of cancer is preventable if proper screening proper lifestyle measures proper testing uh, is followed but is it that cancer is just galloping ahead and treatment is not doing much not true actually advances in treatment have reduced the death rates and mortality from different kinds of cancer throughout the world in in developed countries for example in the us there has been a 29% reduction in deaths from cancer from 1991 to 2017 so which means that while cancer is growing at a somewhat alarming pace given our rapid increase in elderly aging population techniques to treat cancer have also shown considerable advances and to discuss this with you we have the finest experts possible we have professor dev professor svf dev who is the head of surgical oncology oncology as you know means pertaining to cancer head of surgical oncology at the all india institute of medical sciences new delhi we have dr harit chaturvedi who is the chairperson of the max institute of cancer care max healthcare and we have dr raja pramanik who is the associate professor of medical oncology at the all india institute of medical sciences new delhi thank you friends for joining me in the show and we hope to explain to our viewers the benefits of modern treatment and how it has changed in the last 10 or 15 years i'll start with you dr devan that's exactly the question uh, are we any way better in delivering cancer treatment than we were say 15 years ago we are not only smarter but we are wiser now so we always learn from our experiences over the last 15 years what has happened is we really understood the intricate mechanisms of causation of the disease and the interaction of treatments with patients and we have realized i think the conventional treatment methodologies which are being used even though we were curing cancers but we in the uh, process we used to uh, the patient used to have lot of side effects the quality of life issues and we have a better understanding of the cancer causing mechanisms basic research so we are well equipped to handle these cancers nowadays now we are in the era of precision medicine and personalized medicine so that is the buzzword in the field of oncology so now we are able to individualize the treatment for a particular patient in the same breast cancer for the sake of public i would like to say your treatment approach in a patient in two different patients is different because the tumor makeup the patient how she reacts to the treatment now we are able to understand these intricacies because we are well equipped to study the tumors to study the patients and tailor the treatment according to the needs of the patients so in the process we are able to give a better outcomes at the same time we are able to give less side effects so i think this is the overall sort of approach whether you take systemic therapy radiotherapy or surgical field i think uh, it's a we are much wiser we are much smarter and we are well equipped compared to last decades so years. that's that's very very encouraging information as we learned that a large proportion of cancer is preventable but if you do get it treatments have improved considerably and research into causation of disease ki cancer kyu hota hai aur uske ilaj mein chahe surgery ho chahe chemotherapy ho chahe radiation ho sabhi mein advances hue hain jisse ki jaise jaise cancer badha usi tarike se treatment bhi badha hai aur usse ये भी हो सकता है कि कैंसर से होने वाले खतरे हमारे धीरे धीरे कम होते जाए जैसा कि एक्चुअली हो भी रहा है ये कैंसर में डॉक्टर चतुर्वेदी ये लोग स्टेजिंग की बात करते हैं हमेशा सबसे पहले जैसी रहे स्टेज क्या है तो वो स्टेज वन टू थ्री फोर हम लोग ने पढ़ा था एमबीबीएस में स्टेज वन टू थ्री फोर तो ये स्टेज बड़ी भयानक एक भयानक शब्द है उस पर लगता है कि अब स्टेज फोर है स्टेज थ्री है इसका मतलब क्या होता है सो बेसिकली स्टेजिंग की जाती है टू ग्रुप पेशेंट्स ऑफ द सेम डिजीज इन टू सबसेट्स विच विल हैव सिमिलर आउटकम्स एंड सिमिलर स्ट्रैटेजी ट्रीटमेंट नाउ व्हाट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड रियलाइज दैट 
there is something called new staging keeps happening because something which was stage one till about five, five years back is now labeled in stage two or three or something which was stage four is now labeled into stage two or three because new information and as Dr. Dev was mentioning understanding of tumor, tumor biology, is my ERPR kya hai, is my MSI ka status kya hai, oral cancer mein P16 kaisa hai, sab cheezo ka impact hai. There's a lot of interplay, lung cancer mein kya ho raha hai, GI cancers mein. The in sab cheezo se jo important message hai, don't get caught by the word stage. Kya hota hai, humai OPD mein roj log pushte hai, doctor sab stage 4 hai, toh hum aage kuch nahi karayenge. Aray bhai stage 4 hi sirf nahi hai, usme uski biology dekhni padegi, usme opportunities dekhni padegi, aur jaise unko integrate karo, new options emerge. So, my emphasis from this will be that we have to look at the stage, we have to look at the tumor and we have to look at integrate all the knowledge available in the group. Just say, I'm looking at tumor board decisions are very common in all oncology practice. So, when I have a patient, I have to say, 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 so that is where the world is moving and that is what is the power of today's teamwork in medicine and med oncology as a whole. So sirf stage se nahi hume parishan hona chahiye. Just the stage doesn't necessarily tell you all about your prognosis and all about your treatment. There are many other biological molecular factors that are studied by your doctors these days to arrive at a conclusion about your treatment and about your outcome. So don't get alarmed by hearing the staging of your tumor, ask your doctor much more, ask more about the prognosis, ask more about the treatment. Uh, Dr. Pramanik, uh, question for you. Uh, you know, we, we're always scared of cancer therapy because, you know, it's often toxic. And we are scared that we take cancer therapy and then other normal parts of my body will get affected. But what is this concept of targeted therapy that you hit only the tumor? Uh, can you explain that for our viewers? Sure, sure. As Professor Deo mentioned, the precision medicine is the buzzword. So, this means giving the right drug to the right patient at the right time in the right amount. So, this is the concept of precision medicine. And how do we practice it? By looking at the targets or the vulnerabilities of the cancer. And how do we do this? At the molecular level, we see the vulnerabilities of the cancer at the DNA level and the protein level. So, cancer cell is different from the normal cells. In, uh, uh, at the level of proteins. So, certain proteins are expressed more on the cancer cells. So, if we give a drug that will go and stick to that cell only and kill that selectively, the normal cells will be spared. This was not possible with conventional chemotherapy that killed all the cells uh, as a side effect. We had bystander effects also, uh, which resulted in side effects. If, but for this, with these targeted therapies, we are selectively killing the cancer cells with these medicines. They can be tablets, they can be injections. And we are sparing the patient of the side effects. Let me give an example. For example, uh, CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, is a disease uh, with, uh, for which the treatment uh, was not very effective until uh, uh, 10 years ago. But in the last 10 years, we have this magic molecule. We have found that this cancer is driven by a protein called BCR ABL. It is defective inside the cell and it's normal in the other parts of the body. So if we give this drug, oral one tablet, this, pro this protein the function of this protein gets altered and the, it is restored and then the patient lives. He lives longer, he lives almost a normal life these days. So, CML patients live a longer life, uh, almost normal these days. Similar things are happening with lung cancer, we have targeted therapy like EGFR anti, uh, uh, antagonist and then we have uh, chrysotinib against the ALK molecule. So, we look at the targets inside the cancer cells and hit them selectively. This is the concept of target so, therapy. So, this is real high quality sustained research that has led people to these targets and to development of drugs that are targeted at a very specific part of the molecule or a protein or whatever so that you can uh, achieve this and I think that's remarkable and that's really good news. Uh, but what about surgery, Dr. Dev? You know, after all advances are in technology, so technology has dramatically improved in radiation oncology. Technology has improved because of research in medical oncology. He can conduct a medical strike on the tumor. Now, the thing is that how has surgery changed? Because the surgeon is the same, the instruments are the same. What has really changed in surgery or what advances have taken place in surgery? 
Uh, I think surgery has witnessed uh, uh, some of the remarkable advances <coughs> in the field of surgical oncology in the last 10 days. As you rightly said, the technology has played a very major role. And overall surgical approach, the philosophy of surgeons used to be different 10, 15 years back, the cancer okay. surgeon's philosophy. Whenever an organ or an individual is affected with cancer, the main aim is to remove the entire affected organ. So the philosophy of surgery of, uh, of cancer has changed. Now our approach is organ conservation or organ preservation, whenever it's feasible. So that is the basic fundamental shift in the thought process of cancer. The second is improvements in outcomes. We have seen phenomenal improvements in the outcomes. I think it's not only because mm. of advances in the field of surgery, but entire perioperative care, what we call the entire teamwork of the anesthesia, the support systems, they have phenomenally improved. Nowadays, 90 to 95 percent of patients, you don't have to fear about surgery. The mortalities, the operative mortalities are less than one or two percent. Very few patients die because of surgery. Ten years back, situation was different. Major cancer surgeries, patient was afraid of surgery what may be the outcome and all those things. So I think that is the second major development. And technology, I think, has played a very major role, especially in the field of minimally invasive surgery, robotic surgery. So now uh, we are going with uh, minimal access surgeries for most of the thoracic cancers, GI cancers. So I think the patient outcomes have phenomenally improved. And also the other technologies like navigational surgery, sentinel lymph node biopsies, so these technologies are helping in minimizing the, the surgical morbidity. So that was a collateral damage like chemotherapy used to cause a lot of side effects. Similarly, surgery used to cause a lot of side effects. Following, for example, breast cancer, we used to remove all the lymph nodes because we, there's no way to know which node is involved, which node is not involved. But now we have the technology in our hands. Within 15 minutes, I can decide whether this lymph node is positive or not. I think that is a big game changer the navigational surgery, robotic surgery, minimal access surgery. And uh, last uh, major advance I would like to see is surgery for prevention of cancer. It is a reality now. Patients with uh, genetic mutations, high risk mutations, we can do offer prophylactic surgery. Before the patient develops cancer, we can operate and prevent development of cancers. That is a reality now. Because of very accurate predictive tools, Absolutely. which can tell us that this person is undoubtedly going to Absolutely. get this disease. So you would... Uh, can you give me just quickly two, three examples of conservation of organs that you yes. do now, which we weren't doing earlier? Absolutely. I think the best example is breast cancer. Yes. Uh, we discussed that. Yeah. yeah. Breast conservation. Uh, now, uh, days in the Western countries, almost 80, 90 percent of patients, we can conserve the breast. There is no need to remove the breast for breast cancer. Even, even in India, I think best of centers, we are touching 50 to 60 percent. The second best example, I would say, is the sarcomas, bone tumors. So the amputations are not frequently done. The patients were afraid because of losing their limbs yes. uh, for extremity sarcomas. 80-90% of the times by using multimodality therapy, we can save limbs. So there's no need to go for amputations. Similarly, rectal cancer, we used to do complete removal of the rectum and cr create artificial passage here, which used to be really debilitating for any normal or a cancer patient. So now we are able to salvage the sphincters by using both surgical technology as well as other modalities like radiotherapy, chemotherapy, we combine and try to save the organ without compromising on the outcomes of cancer. So that is the bottom line. I think that's uh, very encouraging to note and uh, remarkable advances uh, in, in technology in all three disciplines that deal with cancer, in not only in radiation, as we are well aware, that has changed considerably, not only in medical targeted therapy and other therapies, which we'll discuss, but also in surgical techniques. And as we know, surgical techniques have advanced considerably in many areas. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, newer robotic surgery techniques, minimally invasive surgery, even that 15 years ago was not the norm. Absolutely. And now it's becoming the norm for most surgeries. So I think all those things reduce the risk of any complications, any damage, improve quality of life, hasten post-op recovery. And I think what Dr. Dev said was very important about multidisciplinary approach, which is, no, which is not just surgical, medical, uh, and radiation oncologists, which is also the people involved in the surgeries, the anesthesiologist and the whole critical care and the uh, recovery team. So I think that's very, very important. A lot goes into treating every patient, and we have people who are doing it day in and day out. Uh, 
Uh, one question before we take a break, Dr. Chitravedi. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, it's always people are worried about how long they're going to live. What is my, you know, am I going to live five years? I, five years uh, survival is one of the things yeah, that people we use. talk about. Uh, yeah. uh, ten years. But, you know, what is the use of living? If my quality of life is so poor that I'm unproductive and not always pain, in pain or on bed. See, if we look at the conversation of the last 15 minutes, it's all about quality of life. Dr. Raja was talking about target therapy, Dr. Dev was talking about salvage of limbs and everything. So whenever in oncology, as oncologists, this is one normal communication we have all the time within our teams also and with the patients also. It's not about life, it's also about quality of life. And here I will say that the predictability, whether you live 5 years or 10 years, is something which is a figure for in academic discussion. But the reality is that when a patient in front is there, we need to discuss about that patient and the probability and then have a call. My only humble submission on that is that often we try to keep the patient out of the conversation. That should not happen. I encourage people and I, I say this that it, I often see reverse parenting. When elderly get cancer, the children will come and tell me that they don't know them, they will get morale down. I think that you are the parent, they are all understanding, they are involved, we will take a better decision. This is a very big challenge. This is a very big challenge. When patients come to OPD, there is a lot of pressure on the back. If they come here, they don't have a diagnosis. Yes, don't tell them. Exactly. So, yes, it is a challenge. 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 Yes, it is a that person should take a call. Also important is to have a palliative care specialist or a psychologist and all those people engaged. Because what happens at certain point when the outcomes get poorer and poorer, then the clinicians have a drive to drive certain things which they believe in. I'm not saying they're wrong. But when you involve this, all the stakeholders take better decisions. Absolutely. So all the stakeholders should be involved and then we can take a good decision. And that is important. Thank you uh, for that uh, wonderful explanation. We take a short break. And we'll be back with you soon with more information about cancer treatment. Welcome back after the break. Dr. Pramanik, we spoke about targeted therapy. But there's also this thing about immunotherapy. You know, cancer is not an autoimmune condition. What is the meaning of immunotherapy? Are we stimulating the body's immune system to act against the cancer better? Or are we using vaccines? What is happening with immunotherapy? So immunotherapy is like a revolution that has happened to, can to cancer treatment in the last 10 years. We know our body is under surveillance with the T cells. T cells actually हमारे शरीर के सर रक्षक हैं। They are like soldiers. They keep patrolling inside our blood, inside the organs, every nook and corner of the organs. ये वही T cells हैं जिसके बारे में COVID में आपने सुना था कि ये ये जो है ये humoral response होता है एक जो antibody में दिखता है लेकिन जो नहीं आप मनाते हैं वो T cell response होता है। उसी की बात कर रहे हैं डॉक्टर साहब। Yes sir। तो ये T cells हमारे शरीर में रहते हैं और ये किसी भी foreign चीज को मार स कैंसर भी एक फॉरेन है उसके अंदर फॉरेन पार्टिकल्स फॉरेन एंटीजेंस रहते हैं उसको भी ये मार्ट गिराते हैं लेकिन कैंसर इतना चालाक होता है कि वो इसको इवेड कर लेता है दे इवेड दिस दिस टी सेल्स कैसे इवेड करते हैं इसकी जानकारी हमें डॉक्टर एलिसन और डॉक्टर हंजो ने ये बताया ये T cells आते तो है कैंसर के पास लेकिन वो पैरालाइज हो जाते हैं वीक हो जाते हैं एग्जॉस्टेड हो जाते हैं अगर हम किसी कारण से इस प्रोटीन की के एंटी कुछ दवा दे दें जिससे ये T cells इन रिविगरेट हो जाए रिज्यूविनेट हो जाए फिर से जाग जाए उनके उनका कर्तव्य उनको फिर से बताया जाए कि भाई तुम्हें मारना है मारो तो वो कर सकते हैं ये and this is exactly what is done by immune checkpoint inhibitors. आज के तारीख में जो drug over the shelf हमें available है nivolumab, pembrolizumab, these are anti PD1 antagonists. These these medicines stick to this protein and they rejuvenate the T cells so that they can perform their duties and they can very effectively kill those cancers. And we are seeing the results. Last 
आज से पाँच साल पहले भी सर ऐसे कैंसर्स जो पूरे स्प्रेड कर गए हैं रिफ्रैक्टरी हैं हॉचकिन लिम्फोमा मेलानोमा जिस पर हम सोच नहीं सकते थे कि ये जिंदा बचेगा दे आर लॉन्ग टर्म सर्वाइवर्स नाउ सो काफ़ी सारे कैंसर्स में हेड एंड नेक कैंसर्स लंग कैंसर यूरनरी ब्लैडर कैंसर किडनी कैंसर जिसमें कीमोथेरेपी कई ज़्यादा काम भी नहीं करती वहाँ इम्यूनोथेरेपी जबरदस्त बहुत अच्छा परफॉर्म कर रही है पेशेंट्स मेटास्टेटिक डिजीज में भी लंबे लंबे कई सालों तक सर्वाइव कर रहे हैं विद ए वेरी गुड क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ अच्छी बात यह है कि टॉक्सिसिटी भी कम होती है इन दवाइयों की एल्डरली लोग भी टॉलरेट कर लेते हैं बहुत अच्छे से सो दैट इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ इम्यूनोथेरेपी सर तो ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट uh, एडवांस uh, है और इम्यूनोथेरेपी uh, को लोग सोचते थे कि इम्यूनिटी से कैंसर का क्या मतलब है लेकिन एक्चुअली बहुत मतलब है जैसे आपने बताया इट्स इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देर आर वेरी न्यू मेडिकेशंस अवेलेबल यूजिंग डिफरेंट अप्रोचेज इट्स नॉट अबाउट द मेडिकेशन पर से बट इट्स अ क्वांटम शिफ्ट इन अप्रोच ऑफ कीमोथेरेपी टारगेटेड कीमोथेरेपी इम्यूनोथेरेपी दीज मेक रिस्पॉन्सिस बेटर एंड लाइव ऑफ आर पेशेंट्स ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस एनी बडी हु हैज कैंसर मोर कम्फर्टेबल not just longer but also sweeter uh, i'll now come back to dr dev now you know we talked about the advances in cancer research and that's why all these things are happening uh, oncology is one of those areas where maximum drug development is taking place you know the next by the way is diabetes that. but but uh, oncology <laughs> is, is is the one where there's maximum development so uh, what do you see as challenges in cancer research in india uh sir i think india we are very strong in numbers uh cancer research you can broadly classify into basic research and translational research basic research means research conducted to understand the molecular mechanisms genetic mechanisms so that's a different hardcore fundamental field translational research is how to implement that knowledge gained through basic research into clinical practice so i think in india we have a lot of uh, our strength is patient numbers Uh, we should actually invest in translational research where we can clinical trials i think we have a big opportunity to embark on clinical trials i think the public also needs to be aware that research doesn't mean you are conducting some new experiments or something like that the public awareness needs to be built because most of these molecules these drugs which are approved are coming through clinical trials only i think in india we have a big opportunity for new molecules for clinical research of course big centers can focus on translational research because it needs lot of investment and uh, for example a simple breakthrough may take 15 to 20 years a simple this immunology breakthroughs or genetic breakthroughs we need to pursue it's a lifetime research so it will take 20 to 30 years i think the low hanging fruits or clinical research low cost innovations i think that is another good area for a country like india because we have limited resources and huge number of patients for example i will tell you the new modalities of radiotherapy hypofractionated radiotherapy conventionally we treat breast cancer with 25 settings in the new research has shown with 15 settings is equal to 25 settings you just translate how many settings you can yes, decrease huge, and how many patients you can impact, treat huge impact. i think these are the kind of research the implementation research low cost research these are very relevant to a country like india where we have a limited resources and a huge patient burden so the importance of clinical research cannot be over emphasized Absolutely. and there is an unnecessary fear amongst people trust your doctor if your doctor is advising you to enter a clinical trial he is doing it in full knowledge Absolutely. basically the doctor and patient are always on the same side even if he is enrolling you in a trial it's for your benefit okay so i think that is very important if you don't trust your doctor you're in for a difficult time then you'll always suspect everything you know so especially in oncology but in so many other areas even in diabetes and endocrinology india is now becoming a hub for clinical research so it's very important that we all participate in this as and when suggested or offered by a doctor don't be scared you will not be treated like guinea pigs that is completely incorrect some propaganda you read that you know patients yeah. may be some isolated Isolate. cases may be there but 95 99% of the research proper clinical trials with proper regulations being followed which is how it is now regulations are very tight is is good for you so do listen to your doctor if that is requested uh dr chatravedi just last couple of questions now uh, you know we are talking of indian research how can it be complete without talking of some traditional systems of medicine 
and all our patients in chronic care are taking their own medication which we are not even aware of Jugaad. so how do you deal yeah. with uh, with uh, so so cancer? this is really uh, and i i am a believer that post covid we'll see a new surge in research because covid during covid the vac development of vaccines and the public discussion on this discourse on this whole thing has brought a lot of awareness and this kind of conversation which we are having all this will lead to more and more people engaging and having an open mind towards trials and research so in traditional medicine what has happened there are two components of that one is where people mm. are have to take something chemical compound or whatever medication and the second is yoga and uh, acupressure and things like that so what we have seen that where there is no intervention involved only yoga and acupressure things are they are already integrated today in medical oncology and in rehab programs they are already integrated we see better outcomes lesser side effects as you see these patients using different things the next phase which i am hoping to see very soon that we all need to create a common language right now the language is different we don't understand what ayurvedic is what I, they don't understand our language there's no data there really to discuss that what is there we need to create an in, a service where all this and ai and uh, artificial intelligence based lot of things are happening which i am aware of back end which will finally next few years which we'll see that how these things are coming together and that will lead to common language and then putting patients into so time. synergy between synergy. different disciplines yeah might but only be very beneficial, but it has to be scientific. Yeah. And you see, the basic thing is that science means questioning. Yeah. We don't believe anything just because it's even written in the book or because a teacher told you now that is the trend. We have to question and satisfy ourselves Absolutely. with the answer and see the data. So if we can blend that in a scientific way, we can benefit our patients and our country and worldwide, worldwide. Uh, hugely. Right. Yes. Last question for Dr. Pramanik. Uh, where, what does the future hold? Where do you see this going? And, you know, we've already discussed some of it, but where, I mean, you know, there are a lot of issues about these developments. And one of them is, of course, the cost issue. Because while there are a lot of developments in technology, cost is a major deterrent to their use in the public system and in out-of-pocket payment in the private system also. So where do you see this going? So the uh, answer to the first part of your question, ki, what do I see in future? In future, sir, the immunotherapies will emerge as cellular immunotherapies. I talked about the injections, the molecules. Even the cells, T cells are being harnessed out of the body. They are being re-engineered and then given back to the body to fight, infect, to fight the cancers. These are called CAR T cells. They are very effective in B cell, acute lymphoblastic lymphomas, uh, leukemias, then in any lymphomas. They are going to come in a big way. The second thing that I predict is, a, is liquid biopsies. These days, we, bi we biopsy through the guns or through open biopsies, liquid biopsies can give us a shot. The, the DNA which the tumor sheds into the blood, that can be harnessed and that can give us the entire profile of the tumor. So this can be used to find targets as well as to see whether the entire tumor has been taken away or not. This is called measurable residual disease. So liquid biopsies and these uh, CAR T cells are going to come in a big way and will impact the cancer treatment. Now coming to the second part of your question, how do we deal with this cost issue? Sir, I can see it in the eyes of my patient every day because every day at least 90% of our <coughs> patients cannot afford these therapies which, I am, which we are talking about today, the immunotherapy, they are so costly. So how can we circumvent this? The first thing as Dr. Dev said, the participation in clinical research, clinical trials, this is a win-win situation for the patient, for the doctors, for the pharma companies, everyone. The patient gets the drug for free and this is how the drugs these drugs have been developed. The second thing is the generics and biosimilars of these targeted molecules and, uh, uh, and immunotherapies, etc. And these, uh, the Indian pharmaceutical industry has made it possible for many of these drugs and they are doing great job today. So they are making it more affordable. And third thing, till the time these patents go off, we have to engineer, uh, we have to uh, adapt our practice, which is called pharmacoeconomics. For example, sir, I will give you just example of abiraterone is a tablet which is given for prostate cancer. It's a targeted therapy. Usual dose is four tablets in empty stomach. But if we give just one tablet with a cup of milk, fatty milk, this is equal to the, the effect is the same. So this is how Very we are important. reducing the cost for our patients. And th these are the patient-centric pragmatic research yes, that we course, are doing. And course. taking into practice, this is now into the incision guidelines. One tablet abiraterone. So, yes. these are pharmacoeconomics. And the final thing is that the, in 
uh, these targeted therapies are now being incorporated into Ayushman Bharat also, so yes. that the uh, the yes. uh, patients, the large variety of patients are uh, getting benefit of it. More and more targeted therapies need to be included as part of this. So I think science is not a science until it comes to the masses. So that's that's the thing. So, we so uh, fantastic uh, points there. Thank you very much uh, for educating our viewers. I'm sure they've learned a lot about the advances in cancer. Uh, and they will not feel despondent at the very name of, of a diagnosis of a cancer. And I think it's, uh, it's important that they get correct advice and they have faith in their doctors. Thank you very much. Yeah.